Just as a warning, there will be light spoilers for the experience aboard the Halcyon in today's episode. Hey, brother, and welcome back, brother, from the Halcyon Galactic Star Cruiser in space, where we've been for the past two days. It was such a wild experience, and today we are going to be breaking down just what even is this experience, and more importantly, is it worth it? Guys, just as a disclaimer, we were brought down to Disney World to experience the Star Cruiser by Disney. But Disney is not actually paying us to make this experience. So while the trip itself was paid for, this video is not. Hashtag hosted. We said it. Be aware of that moving forward if that affects your opinion at all. But let's jump into it. Okay, right out of the gate, the number one thing that I think that is most likely the case if you are hearing about this particular resort, especially because it is referred to as a resort, is what is it? Right, so in case you're just completely unaware at the moment, the Galactic Star Cruiser Star Wars experience is the latest addition to Disney World. And it's somewhere you can stay for several nights and have a Star Wars experience. They've sort of been, there's been murmurs about it for a couple of years. We were brought down. We were amongst the first people to ever really get the experience yes. on board. And I think going, trying to describe what it is, I think it's helpful to describe what it is not first. That's, yeah, that's, inc right. that's incredibly fair because yeah. that word resort is being used here. Yeah. So I think that a lot of people have seen the price tag and there is a considerable amount of sticker shock involved when you compare it to how much it might cost to stay at the other Disney World resorts. Which is always kind of expensive anyway, so when, I mean. Sure, but yeah. the, the thing about this particular resort is that this is not going to be your basic stay. Like it's not just <laughs> the hotel room that you spend your evenings in that absolutely has a theme. You know, if you go to the Polynesian Resort at Disney World, mm -hmm. then everything has that Polynesian theme about it. The right. restaurants do, the gift shops do, the physical structure of the building also does. Disney is really good at this particular thing. Right, so you should not expect this to just be like your regular trip to Disney World where like, this is where you come to sleep at night while you park hop around and then you return at night to sleep at your Star Wars themed hotel. That is not what it is at all. The hotel itself is the experience. Yes. Like the whole thing is that when you board the Halcyon, that's the name of the ship that you are on, you are part of a cruise. It's like you have booked a cruise ship in space and everything on board is what you are going to experience. And it, I mean, it is really cool. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah. the entire experience fr from the word go is insanely immersive. Yes. Like, there is nothing about this entire resort. There's not like a front desk where you would go and, you know, like ask the, the, the attendant, you know, a question about the hotel. It's right. like everything about this place is in character all, all of the time. The time. Yeah. The entire staff, all of the crew members, if you will, are in character the whole time. And this is what I thought was really impressive. They are going to remember your name, like un in an unbelievable kind of fashion. Yes, like right yeah. out of the gate, you can very clearly tell that like, these people come up to you and they will ask you your name and they will go around like your party. So we were with Jonathan, or Jay's wife, Beth, uh, and then ourselves, and they would go around and be like, Jonathan, Ben, Beth. And then like throughout the rest of the trip, they would refer to you by name. You could be in like the lightsaber class, for example, with 20 other people. And the, the main person in the room would be going around communicating with each individual person by name. Yeah, I mean, it was really impressive. It makes you feel very included right away. Like the hospitality of the crew of the Halcyon right through the roof. And then like, there's like a gift shop on yeah board or whatever, but it's not like a gift shop like you're a guest at Disney World where you can buy shirts that say Star Wars on it, right? Because you're in the Star Wars universe. So nothing in the gift shop says, says Star Wars. Wars, right? It's like clothes you would buy if you lived in Star Wars. Ben is actually wearing 
one of the things from the gift shop. Yeah, so that's that's another one of the things about this is that the more that you are willing to be in character, like it is highly encouraged that yes. you go in some type of character yourself, dress up, bound, be in costume, whatever is right for you. But one of the things about it is that if you get there and you are like, man, I would love to do that, but I didn't bring anything, they have a wide array of different outfits that you can choose from that are all sort of in keeping with what you might be wearing if you were just legitimately a passenger aboard this vessel. Right, like you're just a general part of the Star Wars universe. Because that is really what it is. It is a two night stay in the Star Wars universe. Like everyone there, it's like it's like you have it's like you are living in the fictional world. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the people that you're going to talk to, the other people, the staff that work there, they are not like from Minnesota. You know, like right. if, if you meet people at the Disney parks, it will usually have their name on their badge and it will tell you where in the world they're from. <laughs> this is not the case on no. this trip. When you are there, like they might be from Tatooine and their backstory and their knowledge. And if you talk to them, it's about that. Yeah, like um, they know about Tatooine and they have a story about things they did when they grew up on, you know, on whatever planet they're from. Yes, so yeah. it's, it's ridiculously immersive. So all of that said, the next really big component of what this experience is, is that there is a central narrative that is taking place from the moment you walk on the ship basically throughout the entire thing, right. culminating in sort of a grand finale. Right. Um, this experience is sort of driven by what they call data pads. Yeah. So when you aboard the Halcyon, you are actually going to be given a physical iPhone that is going to be referred to as your data pad for the entire experience. Right. And it's sort of the central driving force behind where you go and when you go to those places. Right, like it has, like it's basically your your calendar, your to-do list, and the story will be driven forward by the different communications you get with the characters on board saying like, hey, saw you out at the atrium. Can you meet me here at 515 to deliver this message or help me sneak this person around or right. whatever it is. Um, and by following the uh, things located in the data pad, it will sort of advance you through the story. Right, and then on top of that, it's sort of like um, like any you know role playing video game, I guess, where you are going to be given options based on where you are and your, who you are communicating with. Right. So if you are communicating with an officer from the First Order, you can choose to completely comply with the First Order's demands. Right. And, and you can choose sort of the dark side, or you can choose the light side, or there's actually like the middle ground, which is sort of like the scoundrel route. Right, and there are like obvious characters on the ship who will be like, that's clear, like there's like a lieutenant from the first, like basically, as a very, very light spoiler, the idea is that you're just a regular person in the Star Wars galaxy who has booked a vacation cruise aboard the Halcyon and are there for a two night stay of fun and frolicking. Yes. But whilst aboard, the First Order takes control of the ship. <gasps> and now that's sort of that, that's sort of the general plot is they're investigating things on the ship. You're learning things about the other members of the ship and uh, it all sort of unfolds from there. Yes, okay. So yeah. from there, I think we can speak a little bit to our own personal experiences yes. as we drove ourselves through the plot. Because one of the things about this, this experience on the whole is that it really is going to be what you make of it. Right, so, like you will get in, you will get out what you put in. Yes, so it's it's the type of thing where if you get there and you don't really feel like being a part of it, then you're going to watch the story continuously unfold around you as the other members mm -hmm. of the ship do. Um, or you can go through and start to really become involved with all the separate missions. And th like this is one of the areas that I think is possibly where having even just read some backstory or having watched a video like the one that you're watching yeah. right now um, might actually prepare you in a way that we were unable to be prepared. Right, I think like having a, a good level of expectations going in, I think is really gonna enhance your experience. Because like we knew like this is an interactive, immersive experience. And we were told like, just lean in as much as you want and like explore, talk to everyone. You guys know us, like we love to find Easter eggs and secret things. So we were just on the lookout nonstop for like, what is like a secret side quest we can complete? Like what's like a little, like what's, what's something we can go find and be a part of? Which we felt like there were, there were secrets on board to be discovered. And I will say, that for the most part, that is not particularly true. 
Yeah. Right? There's not like side quests to go on. The main thing to focus on is just what the comms tell you to do. And it'll be different based on the way you answer the questions. And that'll be mostly how it like deviates around. Yeah. But like knowing that going in, I think would have been really helpful because like our expectation was like, there's, there's secrets and stuff, or there's like little extra missions you'll be able to maybe do that'll be like complimentary or on the side, or maybe I can choose to do this instead of that. Yeah. yeah, like like one of the big things that that was a possible misconception for me was that like I almost came into it thinking about it like an escape room. Yeah. Where like when you're in an escape room, the idea is like, did you look under the lamp? Did you check this thing? Did you yeah. like there's a barcode on that? Is that just part of the blanket or is that like a barcode that's part of the you know the plot of the escape room? And so I think for us, we was sort of like, let's touch. Everything. everything you know let's find as many different you know like well let's open this cabinet can you pick anything up you can well, i wonder what this does yeah you know and i think that was probably where we were being very much ourselves if of course you watch this channel yeah you know, <laughs> like we were looking for anything. those things we yeah. wanted to be able to tell you like what the side quests are how to do them and i think what we ultimately found is that we maybe spent a lot of time attempting to uncover secrets that we weren't, that like maybe weren't as obvious. Right. And ultimately, I think that that may have taken a little bit of our attention away from just going and doing what the central main storyline story was. was. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So like, for example, one night, uh, on the first night, we were in the lounge room where there's a bar. And uh, me and Beth both ordered a drink from um, uh, Mustafar, Mustafar, like the lava planet. And part of the fun of the drink, we'll talk about the food in a minute because the food and drink was spectacular. It was awesome. But anyway, um, it comes with like a little test tube and the test tube, they tell you like, this is like, you know, lava rocks from Mustafar or whatever. You can like choose how spicy to make your drink or whatever. Um, but then as the bartender is like handing it to us, he's like, now he's like, you can choose how how you know how spicy to make your drink they're also kind of really good for like handing secret notes around if you need to do any of that sort of thing and it was sort of like he said that to us like without prompting right and it was like and so i was like staring at it and i was like the next time he came back i was like so do you have a secret message you need us to deliver like and like like but we're and, leaning in yeah, yeah like it felt like have i just been like given an opportunity to play a side quest like to play a game and i was like i was like okay if he like, gives me a message and tells me to give it to someone else and i go give it to them will they like you know, give me something else to do. Right. Uh, like, like that That was sort of thing. And so he comes back and I ask him like, so do you have a message you need delivered? And he's like, he just says, who's asking? I'm like, yeah, I'm asking. You know, trying to like lean into the character. And it's like, at the end of the day, the answer is no, there was no secret message. There wasn't anything to do. It was just sort of like I, a, a fun little interaction he was giving you just, oh yeah, you know, it's good for secret messages. Ha ha. That, that was it. That was the end of the interaction. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I think, I think things like that could slightly be confusing. So, and, and on the whole, this is almost like a for better or for worse. The crew knows this storyline through and through. They yeah. have very clearly practiced it. They, uh, every single person aboard knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, the sometimes where I felt like that was almost an issue was you as like a member, uh, like it, attempting to participate doesn't quite know as much as they do. And so sometimes I almost felt slightly intimidated because it was sort of like, they, they might ask you a question, but you don't actually know like what available responses could be. So like with, right. with the test tube, it was almost like, should I bite on this? Like, how, how does this work? Right. Like, where do I go with this? Is there something I can ask? Like, was there someone, is it possible that I I was supposed to have already talked to somebody who would have given me the prompt that was like, if you find a test tube, we need a way to pass a secret message. Like, right. It, it's hard to know, like, did did that experience exist somewhere? And maybe we just sort of did it out of yeah, order? Yeah, like we found it out. Yeah, or it was like, and it like, you know, part of even getting the test tube was that you had to order the drink. So it was like, which I mean, so it, it felt like something you had to stumble into. Right. Right, like, oh, did you know that if you order the Mustafarian drink, you'll get a, like this little like test tube mission or something? Right. But that didn't ultimately pan out, which is okay. It's just like one of those things, like I just didn't know like how hard to bite on something. Or like the first day we were down in the engine room where they have all these really fun puzzles you can do and they involve like teamwork and working together with the other passengers. And it's really cool. Um, but we found like an open closet and we found like 
as ever with theme parks, like every single thing is like nailed down. So you can't really move any of the props around. Right. But Beth, my wife reached in and she pulled out this like very obviously like loose, like piece of metal. And it was like, oh, you found something like that wasn't nailed down. This feels like we must be able to use it for something. Right. Like it must go somewhere. Like did we just find like a little, uh, again, like a little mission. So we went over to like, you know, the crew member working in the engineering room. We're like, does this go anywhere? We just found this in there. And like, you could almost watch their face be like, mm, that door wasn't supposed to be unlocked. This is exactly what it was. And they're like, we're like, where does it go? And they're like, it goes in that closet. And we're like, but does it go anywhere else? Right, yes. <laughs> and then sure enough, she like played along and showed us that piece does indeed go over and it helps you pull a lever over here and that does like a part of the game. But and like as the rest of the week transpired, we found out what the lever was for and it's just part of the main storyline. And I think what mostly happened is that we found an unlocked door and found a prop we weren't supposed to find. Yeah. And then they just like played along. But it felt like, ooh, if you find the lever, do you get to like pull, like play an extra game that'll like, you know, will like, yeah, send you an extra message on your data pad? You know, and, and it's just stuff you don't know. It's stuff you don't know. So it's it's almost like this this idea of like um, like like a player's guide might actually like. I almost even think that as more people have done this and as more information comes out about like what and how some of the things work, it might be fun to go and know that they're going to work and then watch it play out right. versus attempting to discover them maybe organically sure is, is maybe like what my feedback there yeah. would be um so that being said i think one of the like because other people are on different missions other people right. have chosen different paths there can at times be a slight sense of like fomo right where the the ship will do a really good job of getting everybody back to a central location for the key moments of, like where the plot is right. going to take a big step forward so yeah. You know, one way or another, all of the different missions will kind of bring you back to the central atrium where then the captain might address the entire, entire ship or right. the first order might walk in with stormtroopers or, or whatever the case may be. Um, and during some of those moments, there might be a situation where this whole group of people over here is helping a very notable character like escape. Like right. they're they're creating a diversion and you, you're you watching it happening. You're like, was I, was like, I wait, supposed to, like, could I have helped? All those people know that right yeah and so and, and i think it would be good to know that like going in like if it seems like everyone else knows something you don't it's because they do but it's not but be aware you know things they don't know exactly as well yeah. and you will be your part of the story just hasn't played out yet right and like that was but in the moment, it felt like, how did everyone know to go do that? Like, right. am I, did I miss something? It's like, you did not miss anything. You're just on a different part of the story. Right. And that's mostly what's happening. And, but like being, not being aware of that or not having that expectation going in felt like, oh, did I do something wrong? Did I like miss a prompt? I've done everything it said in the comms. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, yeah, so that's, that's a good like expectation setter is, is sort of how, that is going to work. Yeah. But all that being said, I think that the the underlying message that I would I would hope to instill into you if you were looking to go and do the experience is basically that like it is really good to lean in, it's really good to go and participate, to follow all of the comms yes. and have some level of trust that your moment will come. And yes. there will be a moment where you get to be involved and the crew does such a spectacular job of making sure that everybody is getting like their moment to contribute to something. Yes. Uh, which is incredibly neat. Like So yeah, the other part of it, and I think that will helps ensure that happens, is that it's very limited capacity on the whole ship. Yeah, there so, are a hundred rooms. Right, there's like a hundred rooms and they can maybe hold like, I don't know if they're all full. I think there was maybe like 200 people while we were there sure. or something like that. Say that it, it feels like there's a lot of people around the ship while you're there, but it's a small enough number that the crew can like have touch points with everyone. With every single person, and everybody like, who wants it. Yeah, if you yeah. want to be involved, you will have a chance to be involved. Even if you're not trying super hard, like at one point, like me and Ben and Beth suddenly got pulled up side by like one of like the lightsaber trainers and they're just like, you're with me now. And then we were like carrying important pieces of evidence around the ship. Right. And it was right. like, oh, oh, this is so cool. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm helping. <laughs> we're doing the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was incredibly neat. It was yeah. incredibly neat. So uh, on the whole, that is the experience. There is a central plot that is going on and everything is going to be sort of pushing forward. Yes. Um, 
Then one of the other big questions that we got, so we were polling some people on Instagram about like, what, what questions do you have about this? Yeah. One of those questions was sort of like, what is it like when you go to the park? Right. Now, as a part of your stay, what you are going to get is a trip to Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge. I mean, technically Hollywood Studios. Right. So if you want to go and explore, you could. Um, but there is a lot going on at Galaxy's Edge. So basically the, the transfer from the resort, which is actually physically geographically near Galaxy's Edge. Right. Um, you step into like a shuttle. And the idea behind the shuttle is that it is taking you from space, from the cruise liner, down, down to, to the Earth, ground where you are then exploring Batu. Yeah. Um, so there is no like, like you don't go out and like hop on a bus and drive around and see like Florida. Yeah. No, you no, know, no, no. It's no. like you step into a box yeah. that has images that make it look like you're coming down from space, landing, and then stepping out into galaxies. Directly in. You will not see any of Florida if you don't want to. Yeah. The, right. Not not even at all. And if you've never been to Galaxy's Edge before, it's insanely immersive. It is, it is already the most immersive section of Disney World to begin with. Yes. And now you're like a layer extra deep. And this is what was even cooler is that when you go down to the surface, everyone who's aboard the Halcyon is given this exact pin this right here. So I totally got flipped by the camera, <laughs> uh, which means everyone then working uh, in Galaxy's Edge on Batu will see it and they will like know you're like part of the game, yeah. so to speak, as it were, which was impressive to me. Like we uh, talked to like one of the bartenders while we were on the ground and you know, we were talking, they were like, oh, how's your time aboard the house down? Have you, you know, have you tried these drinks yet? And it's like, those drinks are only available up on the ship. Right. So it's like, they they really know. And they're like, oh, have you talked to Ranger, the bartender? And we're like, oh, we have. And again, it's sort of like, wait a minute, if I talk to you and then I go talk to her, will that ha will something happen? And it's right. like, no, it's just like more immersive. Right, yeah, it, it just goes to show that like these, <clears throat> these people all, are all. Yeah, they're like, they're all in on it though. Yeah. Which, yeah, is, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I will say it really felt like everything kicked into gear once you landed on Batu because the first night we were there, you get a lot of comms and a lot of setup for like, okay, tomorrow I need your help, you know, stealing this or doing that. And like, <clears throat> for example, like uh, the ride Smuggler's Run where you like ride in the Millennium Falcon or whatever. Um, part of that whole storyline is that you're stealing coaxium for the resistance. Ah. And I remember like, leading up to going down the next day, it was like, you're gonna need to meet up with this pirate Hondo and you're gonna go steal some coaxium and you're probably gonna be aboard the Falcon. And I was like, this sounds a lot like the ride. And then I was like, oh, 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 oh. The, the, the yeah. ride, doing the ride will advance the mission. Yes. So that was really cool. Um, so yeah, and then the, the other piece <laughs> of that is that going and doing Smuggler's Run and doing um, Rise of the Resistance yes. are, are the two feature attractions of this particular side of the park. Uh, for one, you will have like lightning passes to both of those rides. Right, you so go right to the front. You go right to the front. So yeah. that's in and of itself a huge, huge thing because the line to get on those rides is typically hours long. So hours, like while we were there, the the line wait for Rise of the Resistance was three hours. Yeah. And that's on a Tuesday in February, right. not even during like peak park visitation times. Right. Yeah. So yeah, like, so that is a huge perk that you get. And of course, then as you go and do the rides, not only are you experiencing the park, but you are also then progressing the plot. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, while you are in Galaxy's Edge, there's a bunch of cool things that you can do with your data pad if you just feel like going and exploring. So yes. this is where I feel like, like we got to kind of geek out a little bit because yeah on many of the boxes, like the crates inside of Galaxy's Edge, there will be a barcode and, or a QR code. And those codes, if you scan them, basically will grant you access to the contents inside of the crate. Yeah, so you might be able to go and get like Boba Fett's jet pack out of a, a crate. And it's yep. just fun to go and like collect all these things. Yeah, so like you scan it, it gives you a little puzzle to play on your data pad, and then you collect the item and ta-da. But I will say, this is another like, point of confusion or yes. thing to be aware of going in is that the entire data pad is run through an existing Disney app called Disney Play, which if you don't know, it's just an app you can put on your phone for when you go to the parks to like partake in more interactive elements of the park that are very easy to just walk past while you're there. Right, so yeah, if, <clears throat> if you just wanna like constantly have something to like go and do and explore, it's a really great thing. Right, it's like a little treasure hunt inside the park or whatever. So whether or not you're doing um, 
the uh, Halcyon Galactic Star Cruiser experience, you could just download Disney Play and have access to like a lighter version of the data pad, which will have like the scan barcodes technology, like functionality right. and like the tuning radar. So you can like pick up communications happening on the radios and stuff like that. And like when we first got on the Halcyon, we noticed immediately that those tools were there. Right. And so it's like, scan and it says like scan a crate get the contents inside and so we immediately are just like looking everywhere on the house for like we scannable must be able, crates. scannable crates like yeah. we must be able to get items and those items will help us later on so like we spent a lot of time doing that and there's like i think ultimately like three things on board which you don't even have access to till the second day and you only need to do them for plot related reasons there's no like secret doing it but we got to the surface the next day and we like saw a crate and we like found the code and we were like oh my gosh we found stuff to scan right so we were scanning everything in sight and i mean it was i will say it was really fun finding stuff to scan doing the puzzles getting the items but none of those items ever came into play in any way like there was like i think there's probably like 50 to 70 crates you can scan in the park yeah and it's fun hunting them down and like doing them and stuff but if you just follow the comms like eventually sure enough there will be like you need to find this specific crate and scan it and get this specific item that's the only one you have to do right. at all you can skip the rest none of it will make any difference uh and you won't really be missing out on anything but like that's another thing like we didn't know that so we were like just get, find as many things as possible because like sometimes you'd scan a crate and you'd get credits and you're like what am i gonna need the credits for the answer is nothing, nothing. you don't need the credits at all right. you don't need any of the items you collect at all that are outside of specifically what the comms ask you to do right so so this this is like one of those things where i think again it go, goes back to the idea like we were trying to be like overachievers like we really wanted to go yep. and find this stuff. We wanted to be interacting as much as we possibly could. And I, I think that while we felt like we were go, like maybe going above and beyond, like it was fun and it was very interactive, but it, it didn't really ultimately contribute to the story, the story. Yeah. So that's, that's like one of those things where it's like, that could just be very fun for you just to go and do, which it was for us. But it also might be the type of thing where it's like, if you discover that it, it doesn't actually play into anything, then that could be potentially it disappointing. Might, yeah, you don't want to feel like you wasted your time. Right. So like we had fun doing it. So, but it was it was like oh, I w it, it would be cool if I don't know like if you found a blaster down on the surface and then you found a door up on the ship that was like oh maybe we could blast through this and like if you had gone you, to the time and found the blaster, then you could equip access the blast behind yeah. the yeah something right. like that. Yeah. Um, there, there's not really anything like that as of now. Who knows? Maybe they'll add stuff like that in the future. But at the moment, that's not really part of it. There's right. just like the main story stuff you need to be focusing on accomplishing. There you go. Um, but also on the surface, you do get to go uh, build a droid at the Droid Depot. Yep. That was pretty fun. And that's We included. built one. Yep. Uh, A2DY. Hey, A2D. Yeah, sorry. Great droid. Great droid. Great droid. Very yeah. reliable. Indeed. Yeah. 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 Gets things done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, so the, again, like that's as we sort of like, yeah, inch our way into the that like the big value question, like like is it worth it? I think you can include basically the, your time at Galaxy's Edge, the lightning passes to two of the biggest rides at the park's hard stop, uh, your lodging, uh, being able to do the droid, the entire interactive experience. One of the next big ones that I would love to talk about is the food. Oh, which is we also about the food. included and is very very cool yes it um, is very cool and it is like it is just super immersive I, I can't like every single aspect of it is like the whole trip is but the food in particular is like a really cool part of it yeah like this yeah. is this is an area where clearly the chefs who were tasked with coming up with some of the concepts for what you're going to eat put a lot of energy into making it like spot on yes um so what's included is that you're going to have a breakfast buffet and a lunch buffet which are both just included in the cost you don't pay for them while you're you know going up or anything it's just you walk into the cafeteria you have free access to as much food as you would like to eat so yep. it's sort of that like all you can eat model uh and then each evening you're going to have like a family style dining experience where there is going to be like meals that are brought out that you then you know eat with whoever you're traveling with um the food itself though is just it's so 
inventive. So it's, yes. a lot of it is going to be meals that you are familiar with. Like, for example, you might have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at lunch, but the peanut butter and jelly sandwich is like in the shape of like the loaf of bread that Ray makes Yeah. inside of like her ATAT, where yeah. she like makes the little packet. So it's like the, like a green yeah. ball of bread, bread, but inside of it is peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. And it's delicious. It's amazing. It's like, you're not exactly sure what it's going to be when you bite into it. It's like, oh, this is good. Yeah. And then like, it's hard to even describe. Like even they had something called like compressed fruit, which I think they must just cut the fruit in a weird way and then like freeze it in a weird way. But it takes this weird like shape and glaze upon it. Right. And it's like, you recognize it. It's like, that's still just a piece of watermelon, but it like, it looks spacey. It does. Or like they have these desserts that have this like insane reflective shimmer that doesn't look like it should be allowed to exist. And it's like in this orb shape that doesn't look like any food you've ever seen before. Right. But it's like, this is amazing and delicious. Or like, I, I, it's like all the food, you'll still be able to tell what it is. But yeah. it's being presented in a very new and different way. And it's like, here's the thing. It's like, some of it, it's like, it's for better or worse. But the point is you're gonna wanna try everything, everything based on the presentation. You might not like all of it. Some of it is insanely good. Some of it you can pass. I mean, well, I personally was like, oh, I'll pass on this, but I'm glad I tried it. I wanted to try everything. Right. Yeah. And included with that, like on tap inside of the cafeteria, they have both blue and green milk. Of course. So you can have like an unlimited amount of. Which they try it on the ship because you have to buy it on Batu. Don't buy it on Batu. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, but then they also, you know, have like unlimited available coffee, fountain drinks, you know, all of all of the basics. But even stuff. that, even the fountain drinks, they're like written in Arabesh, which is like the Star Wars language. So yeah. like they're like the logos are redesigned. So you can still tell it's Coke, but it like doesn't look like the like our traditional Coke logo. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the food is super, super neat. And then the, the evening meals, the first night that you're there, there is like live entertainment that is also going to be happening. Oh, with during, Gaia. We with, haven't talked about Gaia yet. We, we haven't talked about Gaia, okay. which is surprising because yeah. Gaia is very important to the story. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Gaia is basically like an intergalactic pop star. Who intergalactic is, diva. Diva yeah. who's going to be performing on the ship while you're there. She plays a huge role in the plot as everything is going forward. But it is hilarious because like us going on to the ship, of course, have never heard of Gaia before. Right. But like the moment you get there, all of the staff will start having like general chatter about the fact that they are so excited that Gaia is performing. And right. so it's really funny because you have no idea who Gaia really is. Yeah. But by the time she shows up, you're like, Gaia? No way! Yeah, like, like there's no doubt this, the crew will ask you about Gaia prior to the performance. Like, are you going to see Gaia later? And it's like, to them, it's like, it's as, you know, from their, you know, storyline perspective, they work on this cruise ship all the time, but oh my God, whilst you're here, Gaia will be here. Like, you are here for a real treat. Yeah. It is yeah. a treat for us. We, who just work the cruise ship, we're having such a pop star. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's... That's really neat. The performance is incredibly cool. And you know, like you were just down there and it, it's all happening directly around you. Yeah. Um, so that that's like one of the, the really neat things. And then again, that with the dinner food, it's all super themed. It's all super delicious. It's, uh, it, you're, you're getting a huge amount of value out of it. Yes. Um, the other thing that is really cool, as long as we're talking about food, is that if you're the type of person who does enjoy a cocktail, the cocktails on the ship, actually even the bar itself, um, it's called the, the Sublight Lounge. Sublight right? Lounge, yeah. yeah. And inside of it, it is just, it's so, so cool looking for one. But all the cocktails, super, super themed, and they are just like inventive. They are. Uh, we tried, I think we tried we, every single we try, Yeah, we made it a point to try and try every single cocktail. I will say, uh, well, you don't have to pay for the food. If you want the cocktails, you will have to pay for the cocktails. Yeah. And again, they did give us a bunch of drink passes, which was uh, nice. So take that into consideration as well. But uh, it allowed us to be very experimental and try all the different drinks. Yes. And uh, there were, I mean, it was every single one of them is themed to a different planet. And they pretty much nail the theme every single time. They do. Uh, I will say... My personal favorite one, I think, was the one from Dagobah, which is surprising because it comes in and it's not like the most flattering looking one because it's sort of like swamp themed, which is not what you think of as like a refreshing drink. But it was very refreshing and very good. Um, and then the other really fun one I thought was the the Mustafar one, which was like a like a spicy margarita, I guess. Yeah, but that, that's the one that comes with like the test <clears> tube. Little test tube. Add, add as much heat as you want. Yeah. 
Um, it's not that spicy. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, yeah. So they're they're drinks that probably on the whole you've heard of. I mean, it's going to be like your old fashioned Manhattan gin and tonic margarita. Yeah. There's like the English like subtext for like what it is underneath, even if you don't understand. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, if if you're the type of person that enjoys that type of thing, I would recommend it because they are good. Yes. One of the other questions that we got over on Instagram is whether or not this would be a good trip for the whole family, and the answer to that is yes. It it absolutely is. Absolutely, especially, I think if you have like young kids from probably like five to 12, especially. Yes. Like that is gonna be right in their range, especially if they are Star Wars fans, especially if they're like interactive kids in any way. Like the cast does a tremendous job of like giving the kids their value. Yes. And it's, it, there is, it's like, it's very interesting. Cause like, you know, you have this Lieutenant you know, first order officer there, like the kids will be in the front row and they're, you know, telling him what a bad person he is or like they're, or they're trying to trick him or confuse him and then just take it in stride. Like they're just talking to any other, you know, civilian in the Star Wars galaxy right. at all. They take them very seriously. And like, it, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a really impressive balancing act between like you as the adult knowing that like that performer is trying to make sure that that kid has a good experience, but is also making sure that that performer knows that there are other people in the audience who are older who need to have the same experience, and they do a pretty good job balancing that. Right, because that, I mean, that's really the thing. Like, they definitely have a script that they are following, you know, in terms of like the high points and everything, but all of the, the people, the key people on the ship are, there's a huge amount of improvisation that yeah. is going on in terms of, the unique touches that they are giving to each of the, you know, the people that are attending, you know, that, that are passengers on the ship. That is probably where I think, for one, it's great for kids because I think probably as adults, we might have a little bit of inhibitions about diving into a full blown live action role play. Yeah, I mean, I mean, especially if you're not accustomed to it, like if you're already doing that all the time, like you're gonna have no problem. Yes. Here at all. But like, we don't do a ton of like live action role play stuff. So it's like, there, there is like a certain layer, like when you are talking to one of the characters, like even if you're trying to lean in, it's like, you know that you're kind of performing in this conversation and you know that that person started performing in this conversation and you both know that you're both performing, but like you're both having the same in in world jokes and can recognize it like the humor of it being an out of world. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's like, like there's like several layers happening. You're like, hmm, okay, this is a funny conversation in universe, and it's also funny that this conversation is happening in universe, and I'm aware of the out universe side of side of things. Yes, yeah, yeah. but I, I would say like for me, for example, it was like I, I desperately wanted to be like a huge part of it, but there was yes. one, there was like one scene that was going on where uh, one of the like Jedi or not Jedi, the lightsaber trainers was like, Ben, what do you think we should do? How can we create a diversion? And I was like. I don't know. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know what <laughs> like, to do. I, I reached for something and I had nothing. Yeah. But let me just say this though. If like that there, it, it's like that is an example of them giving you an opportunity to be as, as involved as you want. Right. Because at the end of the day, that like the story needs to progress. So it's like, if you can't come up with something, that's okay. Because either they're going to turn to someone else and get an idea or they're just going to tell you what to do. They'll just, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So they'll, they'll ask you, they'll like give you the opportunity to come up with something yeah. first. Uh, and if you have nothing, they're like, what, what if we start an argument or something? Like everybody go and discuss like this, you know, and then like you, like everybody would just go and start making like a lot of noise in the middle of the room right. or whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah. we, we created the diversion and they, they ultimately, they gave you the chance to do it, but they will also guide you if you don't know. If do. you don't have, yeah. And it's like, if, if you like take a step back, like clearly what's about to happen is the, like if they're asking you to start a diversion, the person playing the first order officer knows that that character is asking your crowd to start a diversion. Right. So when it starts, they're going to, no matter what you come up with, they will be appropriately diverted. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes. Like your diversion will work. Yeah, uh, they're not being caught off guard. They might be caught off guard by the humor of whatever you came up with, right. but they're gonna be able to roll with it too. Yeah, like that being said though, like the people that you were interacting with, again, you, you sort of have the, the paths that you can take. So it's possible that the, the Lieutenant from the First Order, you want to help him, right. or it's possible that you want to divert him. Um, this was something that I think we thought was going to play a much bigger role. Right. And it, ultimately really didn't so right like there's this like you every time you get prompted like with a series of questions that might divert your 
uh, story from someone else's. Like, there's a pretty obviously, like, light side answer and a dark side answer and, like, the middle ground Han Solo scoundrel answer. Yes. Yeah. Like, what will it cost? You know, that information is worth money to me or something like that. Right. Which is, like, one of those things where, like, there is the credit counter on your data pad. Yes. And it's, like, then there's questions that will prompt you for, like, what's that worth to you? And you're, like, oh, am I going to be able to, like, earn some credits by, like, you know, propositioning this guy? As far as we experienced... No. Yeah. Like and at no point in time, like it's it's kind of one of these things where it's like it does lead you to believe like, you know, that if, if you're sort of like rough and tough with them or if you're not like you're not immediately like, you know, I'm sorry, I align with the first order or I'm sorry, I align with, you know, the resistance. It's like you're sort of in that like like bargaining, like, you know, I'll help you, but it's gonna cost something. It's like you keep thinking like, oh man, like all right, they're they're gonna be like, oh, all right, you you, you drive a tough bargain, how much is it gonna cost me or whatever? And then you'd be able to like build up credits, which might ultimately turn into points, which might ultimately be able to use for something. Right. None of that was ever c- nope. the case for us, at least. Like we, <laughs> maybe we were just bad at it, but we never earned any credits for any mission at any point in yeah. time. There, yeah, so that's that's another thing I think just to be aware of like the credits, there's no, don't worry about that. That's not a thing. The, but it was confusing because inside like the Disney Play app, there is like a alignment meter Yes. That shows like light side, dark side, scoundrel. And so I, you know, it kept feeling like, okay, if we make certain decisions, it will advance us. Like these meters will start in, in like moving. Yes. And they never did at all. It just remains like semi grayed out the entire time. So maybe that's a feature that just hasn't like fully been fleshed out yet. Yeah. But, but at the very least for our experience, it didn't end up being relevant. Yeah. That being said, if you're going to do first order or resistance, I would just say fully commit. Yeah, we, both of us, we showed up and we were sort of in like our bounding gear as Han Solo and Boba Fett. Yeah. And so I think both of us were sort of like, we, we fall into that like bounty hunter, scoundrel, yeah. you know, smuggler. Range. We'll type. choose the morally gray path. Yeah, so that, that's what we were trying to do. And it ultimately didn't really feel like there was a narrative that followed yeah. that path. Like I, I, I eventually we had to meet like the guy as manager on the bridge one night. And it felt like that was like the culmination of that path. Like this will take you to this bridge experience eventually. Yeah, so you'll get to, that's what you get to do. That's what you'll get to do. Whereas like if you took the first order path, maybe you met the Lieutenant down here and you had a different experience there. And if you chose the more um, resistance path, you got to help sneak certain characters or, you know, something like that. But um, it did, I, I would say just go for the resistance or the first order. Cause the one we tried to do didn't seem like it paid off a ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. And now this is an interesting question that I don't know. Like it was pretty clear our entire crowd, and I assume this will be the case 90% of the time was all resistance. Yes. And like, you know, the first order officer would come out and everyone would boo him. There were certain people who were like, yeah, I'm gonna choose the bad guy side. And you know, they were helping. And sure enough, if you did that, towards the end, you got like shout outs if you were like particularly helpful or you had like a good interaction. Yeah. 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 Like he's like sitting there like, there were some of you who were very helpful. Savannah. Yeah. Yeah. And like Savannah is like a, like a eight year old girl. (laughs) Yeah. Like in her dark robes. Yeah. And you're like, yes, Savannah. Yeah. Good for you. I'm so glad you got your moment. Yeah. So that stuff like that's really fun. But it'd be curious to me, like if, over 50% of the crew like decided to help the first order, like would that tip the ending a certain way? Right, like, so that would be a very curious thing for me is like, can it end in a way that's different or is it always sort of driving towards the inevitability that it's driving towards? Right. Um, That being said, the finale, like the, the characters that show up and stuff, it's really cool it when is really they cool. show up. You're yeah. like, Whoa, it's and, awesome. And, like there's a lot of hype that's built and when you get to like meet them and see them, it, it has the desired effect. It's, yeah. it's, it's incredibly cool. Um, so all of that said, Jay, I feel like we do have to answer that question of like, is it worth it? Because right. that, that's like the million dollar question or really in this case, like the 4,800 to $6,000 question. Which right. Is about the, the, the range of how much it might cost to go on this particular adventure. Right. Um, so there is, no part of me that is here to say that I think that that is the most approachable vacation amount, especially for a two night stay. Right. Um, However, yes. if you are a huge Star Wars fan, if you like, you know, immersive theater or live action role play in any way, I think even if you're just like a casual Star Wars fan who likes 
live action role play uh, and you want to exist inside of the Star Wars universe, then like you are gonna love this. Yeah, it's the 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 thing I kept coming back to with the entire experience is because the the number one thing like we posted pictures and people were kind of responding like you know is it worth the price tag like is it like should I do it and the answer is that like the value is there right like it is. Once you get there and once you see it and once you realize how immersive it mm -hmm. is and like what comes with all that, it's there. The yeah. value is there. Yeah. But the 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 caveat that I might put on the end of that sentence is that doesn't necessarily mean that it's for everyone. Right. Like if you're looking for an incredibly luxurious resort to stay at while you are at Disney World and you're hoping to go and see like the fireworks at Magic Kingdom one night, do not stay Don't here. do it. That's not what you're looking for. Yeah. Like, like this is, this is, it's, I think it's better to think of it not even like you're going to Disney World. This is, yeah, it's, right. it's almost like a vacation that exists adjacent to Disney World and right. is involved with Disney World, but it right. is not the like, Gotta have my park hopper passes. Gotta have my sunscreen and my, right. you know, everything for my days out at the park and stuff like that. Cause it's it's just, you go and you do feel like you are a part of it the whole time. Right. Um, in addition to that, one of the comments that came up is why is it like, it's a lot of money for only two nights, uh, which is also a very good point. But the thing about the excursion is that there is something going on always. All the time. So yeah. Your like, data pad will be loaded up with your calendar of things you can be doing, and they will be butted up to each other nonstop. Like yes. there is always somewhere you could be doing something. Right. You might not choose to partake in literally everything. Like one of the things that'll have for like a half hour block is like there's a Sabak tournament you can go play in. It's like not everyone wants to go play Sabak, but then you just have like a half hour free time to go explore the ship or whatever. Right. But but you could. There is something you can always be doing. Yes. Um, yeah. And so that being said, despite the fact that it was it was this like two night excursion, you sort of get there middle of the day on the first day, you're there until the evening, and then you have like one full day and then you leave, you know, the following morning. It felt like a lot longer than a two night stay. Yeah. Like it, because, because so much happens, you don't walk away from it and being like, man, it's already over. Like, yeah. like a lot's gonna happen. And this is like another weird thing, maybe to just sort of be aware of, or it's hard to, it's hard to know how it's going to affect you. But like the idea is that you're in space, right? So there are no like windows, windows that show you the actual outdoors. There are windows all over the ship, but they're looking out into space. Yeah. Or, you know, a screen that's showing you space. So in a very weird way, like the passage of time with, this is something, unless you've ever experienced it, like fully, is very hard to comprehend. But if you as a person don't have access to seeing the actual sun move around, the it's passage of time moves weird. And it makes your days feel so full and since so much stuff is happening and since you're so immersed, like you get so much value out of like every minute that you're on the ship. Yep, yep, yeah. absolutely. So on, on the whole, I feel like that was, that was like really my big and final takeaway is that like any hobby that you might be interested in, any activity that you may do, you might be able to look to a, a single piece of equipment or like a Mecca event that you might go to in association with your particular hobby. Yeah. And it's like, your hobby is not everybody's hobby. Right. So going and doing or acquiring that thing, that that tool, that piece of it, that collectible, it's like, it could be worth it to you because you love that hobby. And this is no different from that. If you love Star Wars or you love these like live action role play environments, then it is incredible. Yeah. It is amazing. It is so well executed. Yeah. If you don't like that, then it's just not for you. Yeah, then you 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 probably won't like it. But yeah, if you're if you're a big Star Wars fan, it's like you're gonna like it. It's the ultimate Star Wars experience. It's it, it really is like the ultimate Star Wars experience. It's I I don't know of anything else that is like this immersive in this way for such a big fandom. Yeah. Like I. More, more than anything, yeah, I think that it's where people are going to be confused about what it is is because it's probably just the first of its kind. That That's very true. 
So you're right. Like I, I, I will say one more time, like it is not a regular trip to Disney World. It's not your hotel that you're going back to at the end of the day after you went to Animal Kingdom and rode Thunder Mountain and Splash Mountain. It's like, you're not, that's not part of it. Like the more you leave, like you, you were there for the two night experience of living through this story in this in the get Star Wars galaxy. Yes. And it, the more you lean into that, the more you will get out of it. And I mean, it was it was really cool. It was it, really fun. The, yeah, my my last final note is that it's not relaxing. Oh yeah, let me say that. Like like any Disney trip, it's not a relaxing vacation. Yeah. You are you are doing stuff the whole time. Yeah. Um would you go back? So that's the thing is that I is feel like replayability. I think that there's a layer of replayability. I think that um, in a way, I think that because there will be so much coverage of it coming out of it, because every single other person on the, the cruise with us were other people who are going to be able to communicate what their experiences were like. I think that expectations will be able to be set a lot better for yeah. future guests attending the trip. Yes. Um, I think that for me, knowing a lot more about it um, or even eventually as like my daughter Addison is old enough and if she's inter you know interested in Star Wars, being able to go and do it with your children, I think would yeah. be an incredible experience yeah. because watching like the kids were just like, they were so into it. Yes. You know, like they just like they felt, I mean, in the same way that like you might go and play a game at recess, like where everything is imaginary, imagine that except it's, it's not, not imaginary. imaginary. It's like physically there for, yeah. I would absolutely love to go back and like when my kids are like of the appropriate age where they are into Star Wars and can get into it. I think that would be like so cool. I think you would get so much just like, I don't know, what's the word? So much um, joy from being adjacent to them doing it, which is not to say you're, you can't, you won't also be a part of it. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can like live vicariously and yes, just that's the word on your for. own. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, and so and that's that, that would be the thing for me. I think if I were to go back, I'd feel even more prepared. I think I'd have a better idea of like how to interact, what to interact with, which things to do. Uh, and I would just be excited, honestly, to like maybe see the characters again, to yeah. like get to go to some of the spots to, you know, I don't know, just just do all of it. So um, that, that, was, that was our honest experience. That was it. Um, yep. Yeah, so it was, it was, Amazing. I'd be very curious to know if you guys have any other questions for us, yes. if we could make an FAQ uh, that might be able to go through and really dial in on specific details that you might be interested in. Uh, or let us know, like, did you have a perception of what this was beforehand? Did we change did you, that perception? Did of you it? even know this was the thing that was happening? Or that. Um, be sure to just give us any or all of your feedback and we will do our best to kind of get through and answer any questions that we may be able to answer for you. Yes. Otherwise guys, if you would like to see more about our actual boots on the ground experience, we will be making a vlog documenting everything that we did while we were on the Halcyon. It won't be available the same day that this video goes live, but if you're watching this about a week after it has gone up, it should be available right over there. Otherwise, until next time guys, bye. bye.